Welcome to Friday Night's video on our second master series. I do believe this is the 16th video in our second master series and the sixth video that we're talking about spectrometers. At this point, I wanted to address an issue. The first issue is that spectrometers are great for finding problems. So we talked about signal flow and there's signal flow videos on my channel. And whenever you're having issues, that now that you really understand what you're looking at and looking for, it can help you to really try to find problems that you're having. And also, if you're having some type of issue that's just not a normal thing that should be happening while you're processing or working in the studio, that you hear something and you can visualize it, it can help you figure out what the problem is and or you know what the problem is and then try to track it down where it's coming from. That goes without saying. But now that you have a better understanding of what we're looking at and what you shouldn't be looking at and what you possibly might not should be looking at, that that can be very helpful as you become a better engineer to find things that shouldn't be there that, you know, when you have issues. And we talked about, you know, when we're repairing audio, that that should become very obvious. We talked about that in the last master series that, you know, when we're repairing audio, now that we have a much better idea what we're looking at and what we're looking at on the spectrogram and how that's displayed, then whenever we're repairing things that we can approach that with a much more knowledgeable, from a not much more knowledgeable standpoint as we're doing repairs and seeing what's happening. Now, there are lots of other things. The more that you study acoustic sound, music instruments, and DSP in general, that a lot more things will come out. You know, I mean, there's a lot more uses and things you should be looking for or could be looking for. In this second master series, we've gone a level up from basically the detail of what we were looking at from the last master series. But there are lots of levels, you know, and if you, I mean, we could get right into NASA, but I could make five master series on audio engineering and we could be building rocket ships. But, you know, one stage at a time, that way the first master series was set up to get you a product done. Some people will be good to go with that. Some people want to go deeper and they want to become like, you know, master audio engineers or virtuoso master audio engineers, which means they're going to have to go to another level to make that happen. You know, and, and it's like, you know, in a time frame that's, you know, I, I don't know how to state that because I really tried to make the first master series that you can get it done that way. You can't. In this master series, you're going to be able to get it done better. And you're going to have a lot better understanding what you're looking at. So, you know, there are other uses also, you know, from, you know, finding problems you're having or while you're doing things, just spotting things with your spectrogram to help you do a better job and to catch things, you know, that, you know, we've talked about what should be there, what shouldn't be there, what could possibly should be there and what possibly shouldn't be there. And other things that might be important. I mean, simple things like your room response, you know. You know, being able to look that on a spectrogram or something like that on a waterfall or on a spectrogram. Or impulse responses. Impulse responses, this is an impulse response of a large hall cut down to 50 milliseconds. You know, we had talked about that when we were doing reverberation. And there's some videos on my channel about the C50 clarity guides. And to be able to analyze that, what that is, that's going to get convolved into this whatever sound you're working on. Convolution Reverb, you can just about put any kind of sound file in it, and it's a sound sculpting tool. But besides that, just the impulse responses themselves and being able to know what the heck is you're looking at, what that's possibly going to do to the sound. You can compare the impulse response to the sound you're working on and see if it's going to be detrimental. You can actually tune in impulse responses. You can cut them down. You can do all kinds of things to make them sound better with whatever you're working on. Resonances in the impulse response might conflict with resonances, things happening, and whatever you're working with. The better you understand the spectrometer and what you're looking at, the better lots of things as you're working, as you become a better and better and better engineer 
and other worlds open up to you that all of a sudden you go, wow, well, I didn't really realize that, dude. That, that's true. What? I never even realized I was ever looking at that. And well, how do I analyze that? My spectrometer. Yeah, dude, I know exactly what it's showing me. And I know how to go analyze this new thing that I've come up with because I've gone up another stage from experience, from investigation, from study, from you know experimentation. You know that this tool is hugely invaluable. It's one of the most important tools that you really have as far as analysis in the studio. It really is, and you really want to get used to utilizing it and being util using it a lot whenever you're doing anything to really better fine tune what you're doing so that you can visualize it, you can hear it, you, they can correlate together to come up with better answers because you're not throwing half your tools away by, you know, sealing off your eyeballs and walking around like a blind person. And it just goes and on. The list can go on and on and on. But the better you become, the more obvious it will become. The things that we've talked about that you know different uses as you work through different processes i mean simple things like you wanting to use a a channel splitter or a frequency splitter to where you've cut the frequency off from here so this are you know you're only working with the frequency realm from like here up and it's separated because you've split the channels or split the frequency realm and you're just trying to process this upper area or these harmonics down here or something you know and being able to understand what you're looking at what harmonics are what you know when they start developing into whole steps and half steps and you want to stop there and you want to just process this other these other important harmonics and not fuss with this other stuff down here when you're doing reverberation or something because it can just add more mud simple concepts like that as you become a better and better engineer that the spectrogram is going to become invaluable to you to make you that virtuoso master audio engineer because as you process as you do things that you are really understanding what you're doing from very good analysis and a knowledgeable analysis so that you can implement what you're trying to do well and be able to find issues as you experiment and as you try to do things you're trying to do rather than flying blind so this way i mean you know i really try to rate the spectrogram to most people is it takes you to the next level because now that you understand it a lot better that now you're not flying blind with just your ears like a blind person walking around you are walking around through your production visualizing everything you know you've all of a sudden got sight with your spectrogram of everything that's going on you know in that area does that make sense as well as your ears and you'll get really used to using them together so that you know it's like the old adage of being able to do two things at the same time and being able to do them well listen and visualize you do it every day when you get out of bed and you start walking around and you know i mean you're using your eyeballs and your ears to function and the better you get at using seeing that that's a reality for you in the studio do do whatever you're doing whether you're trying to fix things enhance things you know be find problems that the spectrum analyzer in time with your mentality becoming attuned to seeing things that way that you will become a much better audio engineer and you will most assuredly as time goes by go to those next levels as you go from you really utilizing your eyeballs and this wonderful tool that you have so peace up love i really hope you enjoyed this next video on our spectrum meters and i really certainly hope that it sinks in the importance of it so that you're not flying blind anymore and i'll see you in the next video when we take a look at some other spectrometers and the importance of them and possible usages you might have for them see you in the next video